Okay, I, um, I'm going to do this uh, video on the uh, Frankfurt Arsenal M-Press Coax Press that I just recently bought and I'm going to show you some problems they have uh, basically with their design. Uh, this is the bottom plate uh, that's at the bottom of the press and I'll show you how this thing goes back together. Uh, and this is like, you know, where it catches your shell. There's actually, the first problem I ran into with the press was uh, these uh, rotational uh, parts to uh, grab the shell. Uh, when you uh, want to change the size on them, you have, you know, there's a big, this big honking spring, which I think is a little bit overkill, but th these have to be pushed all the way back to their pocket so you can rotate them. Now, you can see on this now, I don't have the spring or nothing in there, but when I bring it back and I try to rotate it, it's it's hanging up in this machine pocket here. You know, if you look in there, like, this is a real, you know, the cast iron is kind of falling away here. You know, poor, poor machining. Um, and uh, actually, uh, uh, these, the, the diameter of this part is inconsistent like with the other one because you know this little pin slot here you know slides in this slot here and if if it if it's machined back enough it won't even contact those you know that round cutout uh, so what I'm gonna do is uh, I'm gonna take my die grinder and and smooth out that rough casting and then I'm gonna I'm gonna take a, and polish a little bit more off of these edges, so that they don't even contact that outer that outer diameter. And another thing is it's got this shim plate in in the bottom, and you got a big ass burr on them, which I'll get rid of that burr. And the burr was is digging in at the bottom of here. So what happened was is I'm going I'm trying to adjust the. Uh, uh, you know the size of the uh, case and uh, the way they have this in here is they you know it's, it's kind of like a knurled it's it's a knurled uh, shaft so they just drive this in and the little knurls bite into the hole which is pretty piss poor uh, design because what happened was I'm trying to turn this and the knurls just started turning inside the hole you know it, it wouldn't wouldn't turn this part here because it was hung up you know, on that that burr and stuff on this case. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and address that issue, and then we're going to go on to uh, some other problems it has. Okay, what I did was uh, is I took my countersink, got rid of the burrs on this uh, this plate they have underneath here, and then I went in with my die grinder and cleaned up that rough casting area in here and in here was the same way and then I also uh, I took some material off of these rounded edges they were very inconsistent and uh, some of them would drag on the radius and it's it's better if they don't drag it's just riding on this uh, you know this pivot pin you know it's like well, however you put them you know it's just it's not dragging on that radius, it's just going to just create friction. So, we've got that in, and they spin real nice both directions, they don't hang up. But like I say, you have to make sure that when this is, uh, you know, forward, when the spring's pushing it up to your, uh, your shell case. Put the correct one in here. Really, that you can't turn it because it's locked in on this this flat here. So you got to make sure that it's all the way back, and then you can rotate it. So now that we got those freed up, what I'll do is I'll put the uh, spring assembly in, and basically the spring assembly has just got a spring. And it's got this uh, 
like a little follower deal that goes up against the pin. It's actually going to go in this hole down here and it's going to it's going to grab the pin like that. You can see that. Cuz you know it's got a convex concave whatever. And that's how it fits on the pin. So what I'll do is uh We'll put this in. We drop that in so that that curve is on the uh, is on the shaft. Easier said than done, right, guys? See if I can use the spring to help guide it. We're going from upside down. Okay, I got it in. And I just want to make sure that it's on the uh, the concave part. And it is. So we got our, uh, you know, our little pin dealy in with the spring on this side, and like I say, you can take this out and look down in there to make sure your your uh, curve part matches the pin. And then what we're going to do is uh, uh, this is the pin that goes on the pivot arms, which I'll show you the, the, the presses on the other bench. Uh, this locks your link rod in, and uh, it goes in. And it's got this groove cut in here because there's a set screw on the bottom side here. So when you're taking this press apart, that's what you uh, that's what you got to do is loosen that set screw. And uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to put it in, push it down till it seats, and then we're going to tighten the set screw. Got to make sure it's in that groove. That'll keep the pin from popping out. So now this is. Oh. There you go. This is moving free. Now you see, when you bring, you bring this back, you want to bring it all the way back so you can turn it. And see, it'll turn real easy. So it's, you know, it's got to go all the way back to the pocket before you turn it. And then leave it go forward because it lock it locks in over here. So what I'll do now is I'll uh, I'll get the other side set up and uh, I'll show you how this installs. Okay, so basically, you know, you've got the plate. And uh, you know to get you know to get that head through, you gotta you know come up through the bottom of the plate, get it in its slot, and it, it doesn't make a difference the orientation, which numbers or what. And then what you're gonna do is get these kind of close to the edge, like where it's centered, because in here, if you can see, we've got the uh, the curve part. Of that pin that's going to match the pins you know on here the radius part there you know make sure your uh, steel shims in in there and then uh, what you do is come up through that hole kind of get these things centered and your, your pins gonna go right up to the end there, see, so you can push it, it'll push that, that pin back. So now what's going to happen is, you got to push this all the way back and then rotate it. And the spring, you know, is, is pretty tough. You know, if you want to do it with a wrench, you can just, uh, you know, put your wrench on there, but just make sure you pull it all the way back and then turn it. 
Now, like I say, that wouldn't turn like that when I when I got it. It was it was tight. It was hanging up on those radiuses I was showing you. And uh, what I happen is I'm turning this, and that that uh, neural part is starting to strip around in the hole. Uh, basically, that part they should have come up with a better way to do it. Uh, I might have silver brazed. I don't know. There's you know a lot of you guys are good mechanics out there. But this, this seems to, it's not slipping now. Uh, you know, I drove the pin in just a little bit farther. And uh, it seems to be, you know, working all right. Turn this around so I got some leverage. So, that was problem one right out of the gate. When I was... Uh, you know, checking it out. <clears throat> so here was the next problem. <clears throat> I got a stuck case, which, you know, a lot of that time it's our fault. You know, we don't have enough lube or whatever. I mean, I've done this before on my, my big press, and here it is, you know, it's stuck in the die, and there's a system for getting that out. There's a lot of videos on it. I'm not going to do one. And, but the problem was, is like my big press over here, if I get a stuck case and I, you know, pull that handle down, it's going to pull this lip right through the uh, shell holder. I mean, it's got that much power. This thing here, if that shell case sticks, this has, I'm going to take this apart here. I'm loose. All you have is this piece of metal here, you know, to hold against, you know, this uh, shell holder plate. And it's not going to, uh, it, what ha here's what happened. I'm trying to get the shell case out. Now, usually if that stuff is really hard on, on something like this, I would have stopped. I would have released the, uh, the holders. So I could drop this part down and then uh, just uns you know then just pull the whole assembly out and work on it. And I didn't think I was putting that much force on it, but what it did was it actually popped up. It ripped the screws out of this base plate and then went up like this and tweaked it here, kind of bent it. So you know that's when I had to get in and. Uh, get this all straightened out but here here are the screws and see if you can see these little bastards see you know they got a countersink hole but now look let me see if I can get it in there let me get another tool Here it is. Okay, there, dropped in. That's all the thread. You see that? That they've got going into this cast iron to hold, you know, the pullout out of the die. Well, of course, there's not any threads there. You put some pressure on there and it gave it up. So what I had to do was, you know, I had to uh, straighten the plate out. And uh, what I did was uh, I drilled these holes down a little deeper, uh, 632. Uh, this is metric. It's close to a 632. I don't know what the size it is. Uh, and I went with, uh, uh, I didn't have any flat heads, but I got these Philister heads which are you know, really thick head on it, and they're three-eighths in length. So this is how much thread we got going through there now, which is, that should have been done, you know, by Frankfurt Arsenal. Very poor design, very poor. 
Now I'm thinking about adding a hole here at the front. You know, drilling a hole here and uh, going into here and putting an extra uh, an extra screw there also for some more support. And I'll, I'll probably do that. I'll have to set up on my drill press and and drill that. But you know that'll give it another anchor point you know to help keep from bending that metal if you get a tight one and uh, you know every you guys know when you get a stuck case I mean that's some extreme pressure you're trying to get it out but if you do get one uh, you know to, the way you release that I'm going to drag the camera over see if we can do it this way You know, this is the base of the press, and see this pin here, it unscrews off of the base. And that's what opens up your, your, uh, your, your shell holder. You know, it spreads it open so you can get the shell in and out. It goes, you know, right up to the bottom here. You guys see that? And what it's doing is, put that in, smooch them up. See, when this comes up through the bottom, it's, I gotta hold these down, it spreads them apart, you know, because it's, it's a taper. If I keep pushing, it's just gonna pop them out of there. So what you can do is like if this thing gets stuck in the up position, you got like a hard, you know, a stuck case, just remove the tool and then just take it and put it in the bottom and force it up. That'll release this from your shell and then you can drop it. And then uh, and then this die will come right out and then you can work on extracting the case. Uh, you know, that that's kind of a good thing. That you're able to release this whole mechanism on the conventional press you guys know you can't you're gonna to have to pull that arm down until you force those you know this brass to give up on the edge uh, so I mean that's that's the modifications I've uh, I've uh, run into so far so uh, what I'll do is I'll uh, make room on my bench over here I'll show you how this thing goes back together it's, it's it's pretty simple pretty easy to uh, take it apart and put it together but you know if, if you've got problems uh, turning you know turning these things uh, stop right away and uh, do these modifications I showed you you know on uh, smoothing out that cast iron and then uh, taking some material off of these edges so it's not even you know touching that outer edge and then they'll they'll turn fine otherwise you're just going to strip that little you know that little uh you know ribbed edge in there and uh then it's going to be more problems but <clears throat> let me get the camera set up on the bench over there and uh i'll just show you how it goes Extra together one in but these things need to go deeper and 632 and uh i'm using three eighths i mean there's enough meat here you could you could go with a half inch, you know, length on there and uh, use a stainless or whatever. I got I got brass ones, but I don't think there's going to be any problem pulling pulling those out. But uh, let me get set up and uh, I'll show you how it goes together. Okay, we're going to reassemble the uh, the press. It's 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 really easy to take it apart and put it together. Uh, what I decided to do on the uh, the mounting for the plate, um, I went deeper on the holes and I put uh, 632 by half inch in there, you know, to get a, a deeper bite. And then plus I added this screw here on the center. Um, you know, one, one of their, I guess you can say the design faults is this hole here, you know, does not need to be that big. You know, they should close that hole up some more to give it more support on, 
on the uh, actual shell holder part and then also they need to add that screw in there and longer screws of course uh, I mean they've got enough room there they could actually go with an 832 screw without a problem so anyways when we go to assemble this what we're gonna do is you know I've got the uh, pins in just you know to hold everything together so what we're gonna do is loosen the set screws on the bottom so we can remove those pins. You see how it's kind of like popped out because I'm against spring pressure. You got to make sure these come out enough to where the pin will slide in and out. It's not grabbing. Now, like I say, you got to be careful you don't dump your spring and and a little post thing in there out. So you know, now these will slide in real easy. So now what I'm going to do is keep this mess together and I'm going to slide it down over the uh, just like that goes all the way down uh, now these these little washers here they they go in between uh, you know here and the arm I'll show you when I'm putting it on but anyways this whole arm assembly you guys can see it you know it's got the legs and everything just basically slides down on the top like so let me see if I can knock something over here because under these uh, plastic caps here that's where these hex head bolts you know they go in and they they screw the top of this down to those posts so what we're going to do is uh, we're going to get our bolts in. And this stuff here is like metric. And we want to, you know, tighten those things up good. So that's holding this whole head assembly on top of these, you know, these posts down here. So now we're going to hook up uh, our actual lift arms. And uh, let me get the camera position a little better. Okay. So... What I'm going to do is I'm going to remove these, both of them, both sides. I'm going to come down with my lever and see already a screw up. I got it on backwards. It's all right. Do it again, Mike. We're not editing that because this is real life, guys. Let off. And this thing does have a light on it, which is pretty nice. supposed to go there we go a lot better and if you do videos and stuff you got to show the screw-ups too I've got erasers on all my pencils No. 
don't. <coughs> okay. Now, now we got our pins that are going through here. And we've got that washer, so we want to get the pin through here and get our washer on the other side. And then it's just a matter of lifting this up a little till the wiggle that pin in. <coughs> and I just get that one started. Same thing on this other side. <coughs> I get my washer over this. And just you know wiggle the base so you get it started. <coughs> and then you know you got your Allen key, so what I'm gonna do is raise this up. <coughs> so I can tighten these bottom set screws. And these uh, pins here, they stick out a bit. So make sure you, uh, you know, you got some space here and then you know you're locked in your slot. Now what I did have to do is like when I brought this all the way up, it was tight. So what I had to do was uh, underneath here, loosen your, uh, your bolts that hold it down to the, you know, to these uh, rods because there's a little bit of slop, so you want to get that up so it's true, and then carefully just go back and forth and snug each one up so it slides real uh, easy on those because there's a little bit of slop in the head of this thing. So you know, once you get it working real smooth, then you can you know torque them down good. Just good, good and snug. You're not going anywhere. So that's working smooth. Then we'll put our our shell cartridge opener in here. Case holder, as you call it. The screws in the bottom. And then when you go down, that'll open. That'll open your cartridge. And then like I say when you wanna when you wanna rotate that, just you know those little buttons you gotta go all the way back and then rotate it. You know, you should be able to do them by hand. Just push, turn, push, turn. And if it's if you gotta use a wrench on them, you need to get in there and do what I did to uh, you know fix it. You know, if you just push on the end and turn it, you wanna push them all the way back. You know, same way on this one. Push it all the way back, turn it, and it comes forward. Uh, you need to go in and work because if you're putting too much pressure on these to make it turn, like I said, that little neural part is going to uh, strip out in there, and then 
you've got another issue. Uh, so, you know, that's the big thing. Now, the next thing I noticed on here is that the, uh, you know, the thickness of the shell plate is, uh, you know, from where it, where it grabs the uh, base of the round, look at the case, it's, you know, it's, the distance here, I can't get my die down far enough, the die bottoms out on the shell plate, and uh, I still need to go down you know, four or five, no, I was like, one die was like, I had to go out another eight thousandths to get my head space correct from my datum line. And uh, so, you know, the only way to, to cure that problem is I'm going to have to uh, uh, turn a little bit of material off of uh, my die here so, you know, I can get that, you know, shell case to come up farther. Uh, to bump that neck uh, That's another problem now. That's I got two different dies. I've got a Redding and a uh, RCBS and both of them uh, I'm gonna have to take a little material off of them to work. You know, I run into problems like that on my other presses uh, You know with the shell holders and uh, you know same thing, but the shell holder I can just take it and I, you know, turn a little material off so that that dial come down farther, you know, and, uh, you know, get my, uh, you know, get my, uh, my neck bump back for, you know, the right head space. But anyways, that's uh, where we're at on the, uh, you know, you know, Freight for Arsenal uh, M coax press. Uh, I'm going to get my uh, rounds extracted out of my dies. I'm gonna run some more. If you don't hear back from me, that means the thing's running smooth. Uh, if not, <laughs> there'll be another video. But hey, thanks for watching.